Apple's AI moves that will make you want an iPhone 16. Guys, welcome to the All Future Podcast, where we talk about tech coming in the future. I got to say something, guys. Thank you for subscribing. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you for subscribing. I, you know, I'm excited every time I see these numbers. I've been doing YouTube a long time. I, my first 100,000 subscriber channel, I just looked it up. I broke 100,000 subs in 2012. So over, over a decade wow. of uh, doing YouTube content. And since then, you know, I own or operate ones with millions of subscribers and all this kind of stuff. But I'm going to tell you, these subscribers matter more to me for some reason. I think it, not only am I on camera on this a lot more, but I think I like what we're doing here, right? Mm -hmm. Like I think we're talking about tech in a way that is different from a lot of tech YouTube out there. Almost the anti-tech YouTube mm -hmm. channel in some ways, right? We're not like doing reviews and stuff like that. And I think we're trying to just have cool conversations about how this tech is really gonna affect our lives. Yeah. So I love this experiment we're doing and I'm so glad that you guys have jumped on board and subscribed. Um, and really, I, I just appreciate it. Yeah, so, thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, guys. Um, so hopefully you like this video. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. And and we proceed to deliver the worst video we've ever made after, <laughs> after that opening. No, we're gonna talk about something we talk about a lot: Apple, AI, iPhones, mm -hmm. all that, all that sort of thing. And it's uh, how Apple is currently training their new AI model that presumably will be revealed during WWDC, yes, or sometime soon. And the uh, way that they're training this. Maybe not unique, but kind of interesting. Ryan, what's going on with this? Well, we've seen this with a few different AI models where they have to train on the photo side of things from some photo library of some sort. So Apple is now partnering officially with Shutterstock, which ultimately is a really big deal that they chose Shutterstock. I'm mm -hmm. sure Shutterstock's very happy to have partnered here as opposed to any other website. Essentially, they're training their AI models with Shutterstock, and this could mean a number of things. The first thing that jumps out immediately to me is that that probably means that Apple's going to be working on their own photo AI generator. Mm -hmm. But another use case could be simply that it's training on these photos for potential future photos, that it's recognizing, recognizing people, recognizing mm -hmm. dogs, all these things. And Shutterstock already has that metadata and the tags and everything, so it could see that and then recognize where it is, all that kind of stuff. What else do you see this partnership bringing? A couple things. I think the biggest thing it's bringing is protecting Apple from future lawsuits. <laughs> and we've uh, seen already that uh, when these models train, there's a real question of the copyright of it all, mm -hmm. you know, and it, if it's just going just on the, the wild west internet and pulling images and things, I think there's probably a solid argument to say there's some kind of copyright infringement if it's going to, especially if we're doing generative AI and yeah. we're going to generate images based on other copyrighted works to make new works and what I, I i don't know where i land on if that's oh that's exactly what humans do anyway so what's the difference if ai does it whatever that doesn't matter right what matters is the law right mm -hmm. and this since apple is licensing it from a source that is a li image licensing service that's literally what shutterstock is yeah that they are kind of protecting themselves uh, from any kind of claims that they are stealing from photographers or artists or average users, right? I think that's a big question too. If you look at, you know, all these other photo services out there and the the terms and conditions on them, you know, it's like, oh, can these companies use my personal photo that I have uploaded into the cloud to train some kind of AI model? In some cases, yes, right? So Apple yeah. wants to avoid all that. So I think this is a, a cool thing. And just one more piece of that puzzle of what the heck they're gonna announce and do with this. Yeah. Like you mentioned, they could be training a lot of different things on it and maybe not generative AI. I, could, mm -hmm. I mean, you can train a lot of things looking at a lot of photos. Yeah. Maybe it's just training it to recognize blurry pictures or something. Uh, probably not. Um, but I think cool. And I think we're probably going to see some kind of results of this soon. Hopefully WWDC. Yeah, definitely. And I think ultimately generative AI, like image generation, is going to be a part of it. It's probably just a question of timing there mm -hmm. because once they're already partnered with Shutterstock, they're seeing all this stuff come to be. If they're working on it internally, they're going to be like, oh, well, let's just have it try and generating its own image. Oh my gosh. Wow. Mm -hmm. We can actually do this mm -hmm. and then we can deliver this to our customers within the photos app or whatever they may bring to that. But I do have a question. So I have some stuff on Shutterstock. Do mm -hmm. you have, I think you I might. Yeah, yeah. I have Shutterstock stuff. Yeah. So is this something that I should have known would have been a thing or like, when I get an email about updated terms and conditions, is this just like, there's oh, now you, a new You line. definitely have agreed to this, my friend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Because I didn't agree to this years ago. Yeah. I, I don't think. 
that doesn't matter because it's it, now because lawyers have written this stuff so that yeah. they can change the rules of the game mm-hmm. at any time on their end and you're welcome to delete all your stuff from shutterstock right? yeah it's <laughs> I an mean, interesting proposition it, yeah 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 but this is where it gets kind of crazy right and i think where you can start getting to the moral argument of it all right is that there are photographers who have uploaded videos or photo content to shutterstock and the way that shutterstock works you can go on there and buy an image directly, or they also have subscription models. Mm-hmm. But either way, there's a, a rev share system built into it if you are the creator that has put your content up there. Yeah. There is no rev share split system for this AI stuff. Really? So it can use, Apple can use your photo that you uploaded <laughs> 10 years ago of a tree to tra- train its AI, mm-hmm. and you're not going to see a penny of that. But Shutterstock, of course, is because they have the library. Shutterstock will make billions. Yes. <laughs> that's Yeah, that's really interesting because it would be probably, you know, pennies on the dollar or whatever that the value of it would be because I'm assuming an AI is only looking at your particular image for like seconds. Yeah, they're scanning millions that. and millions, right? So the yeah. value of it would be infinitesimal almost, mm-hmm. right? It's like, well, it's still my image. I, right. I want more of a cut. But yeah, that's just an interesting yeah. thing. And, and Shutterstock already does it. Shutterstock has a generative AI system built into it mm-hmm. um, that is trained on its own images, and then you can make images with it and then sell it on Shutterstock. So I, I, that gets into a whole can of worms, right? <laughs> like, So you, you don't even have to be a great photographer to sell great photography on Shutterstock because you can mm-hmm. just use the AI. Yeah, it also brings me to the point that Shutterstock has a certain standard of how good photos have to look mm-hmm. and how good things have to look. So then we're potentially training this Apple AI, whatever it ends up being on like perfection mm-hmm. of like photos and perfection of things being perfectly in focus and stuff, mm-hmm. which we've talked about that at length in other ways, mm-hmm. but all that to say, Apple is working on this and we'll probably see some of these come in WWDC, but then what else do we think that they could be working on maybe alongside this Shutterstock so- deal? So, I mean, there's two big pieces that are popular in AI right now. There is the kind of image generative AI stuff, and then there's the large language model side of it. Mm -hmm. And I think Apple needs to have some kind of answer to both of those. And so if we look at, say, what NVIDIA is doing with uh, ChatRTX, um, which is a, we've talked about it here, but if you you haven't heard about it before, is using uh, NVIDIA hardware to run local large language models on machines. So it's not going to the cloud, it's doing it all locally. Yeah. That is something that Apple is probably super interested in mimicking, mm-hmm. right? And and can you run a large language model, say on a phone, right? And that's what they really want to do. And, yeah. and if you look at some of the acquisitions they've made lately, some of the AI companies they've bought, they literally specialize in kind of downsizing the hardware requirement for AI. So I think that's something they're definitely are looking at. That is the other half of what Apple really needs to do. And I would argue the more important side of it. Mm -hmm. The generative image stuff is cool, right? But I mean, how often do you really take an image, take a photo and go, oh, I wish this person was smiling more or something like that. I mean, that happens. But, and also that technology is already kind of out there, right? Like, I mean, you can get apps on your phone that do content aware deletions and all this kind of stuff. These things that you would do with generative AI. Mm. You can get generative AI stuff on your iPhone right now. Yeah. You know, you just got to get the apps. It's just not built in. Whereas having a large language model built in and if they can make it run mostly local, which I don't think we're going to see in this, you know, yeah. not coming up at WWC, but I think that's ultimately a goal. That's when we can really start to change the game, I think, mm-hmm. for Apple anyway. Yeah, and it can do basic things with Siri, like finding your files, requesting things throughout your phone beyond just like a spotlight search you ask Siri and it actually tracks down what you're looking at and looking for but beyond just like the file name has to be perfectly Mm -hmm. typed in and it has to match and then it finds it like it can search the text or use context and all Mm -hmm. these things these are the ways that you're talking about that Mm -hmm. they want that and that customers would actually want it and use it on their phones and it'd be a worthwhile upgrade or worthwhile purchase Mm -hmm. that actually moves product as opposed to just oh it's an app right one of the challenges you're going to face with here is something else that, that was in in the news this week in the AI world. It's uh, Cohere and, and their AI mm-hmm. model, which is specifically designed to stop hallucinations, really. I mean, that's really, it's, it's it does some other stuff too, but that's kind of its marquee feature, mm-hmm. right? Is that I'm, I'm sure most people listen to this podcast know what hallucinations are with AI, but if you're not, it's an AI returning 
incorrect information are just nonsense are something making up something that is not real mm -hmm. uh we've seen people love when there's high profile versions of this right because yeah. we would be like oh see ai is gonna ruin us all um you know some of the funnier ones out there is the the guy who got the uh car dealership to sell him a truck for a dollar talking mm -hmm. to, the, to the ai bot right yeah so what this model does is cites its sources in a better way and is uh, trained on your local data better so that it can deliver accurate information. The uh, the actual name of the model is Command R Plus. Uh, I believe is how you say that probably, R Plus. Yeah. It's just R in the, a capital R in the plus symbol is mm -hmm. probably what they're going for. This actually is reminiscent of the rumored Apple GPT, which is supposedly their in-house AI system that they're using on like the tech support customer yeah. support side, which is it's only trained on Apple's data. It knows it really well and it's specifically designed to only give accurate information. Mm -hmm. And this kind of does that, but is a thing that other people can buy into and use right now. Yeah. And that's absolutely something that's got to be solved. So yeah, like the, the more of these kind of companies that are out there doing this, the better, right? And we talk a lot, a lot about what's going to make AI proprietary or make someone's AI better than someone else's AI. And one of those big things is going to be hallucination rate. Yeah. And you go, my AI is accurate 99% of the time instead of 97% of the time. Mm -hmm. And that's really going to be the difference. Like right now, these AIs are pretty accurate in the 90th percentile, but that extra 10%, 5% makes it crazy and not usable, you know? Yeah, definitely. So I did hear one thing that this uh, Cohere command R plus, they said it can already outperform chat GPT for turbo. And that's, I think, in relation to accuracy, like you're mm -hmm. talking about, like having that extra percentile where it's accurate. And that's, I, I kind of love seeing all of this back and forth. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this AI outperforms this and this and this AI mm -hmm. outperforms this and this because mm -hmm. it just it's just so competitive and it creates all these different ways that you're finding holes in an AI. Like, Oh, it seems like it's really good at doing this, but it's actually getting stuff wrong sometimes. So this one improves that. And then they're going to have to learn. I, yeah, it's just a whole yeah. puzzle that yeah. Apple is definitely going to want to do on device as well. Sure. It's a little bit of an arms race, right? Mm -hmm. with what's going on right now. And, it, and where it might all land is that we're going to see, and this is why I think Apple's kind of hedging their bets a little investing in different types of AI because they're like, oh, we're going to need five or six of these things to actually make the system work right. So maybe their their LLM is based on, you know, kind of their assistant LLM that's going to be in Siri is based on something. And then it runs another AI that's like it's fact checking system or something mm -hmm. like that. Right. So you're you're kind of like running multiple things both on and off board to make sure you're delivering fast and accurate answers, which is the goal. Right. That's what yeah. that, that's the holy grail. That's what we're heading for. Instant accuracy mm -hmm. is what these AIs are attempting to do. Yeah, and that's an interesting thing as well because you it's like having fact checkers. It's mm -hmm. like having multiple layers. Multiple people look at something and make so sure something's right. It's not just one AI model looking and being like, yes, this is correct. I know it's correct. You have another one that runs underneath it mm -hmm. that double checks all of that information. And I guess ultimately it could be coming from different AI models from different sure. companies yeah. that are running the same thing to get you to this ultimate <laughs> yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah. And it's all happening in the back. I mean, yeah. if you look at how the world is set up now, it's really set up like that, right? There's subcontractors for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like, you know, there's Apple, but it's not like Apple makes everything in the iPhone, right? There's like all these companies that are providing the stuff. There's kind of happy. It's transparent to the consumer. Mm -hmm. I suspect that's how AI is going to be because you're, you're going to probably need that specialized API or specialized AI for different things. The, there's also something I just saw happen that the uh, New York City AI is giving like bad, like almost illegal information to people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw. So it was business owners. It's like a chat made for business owners. That's mm. supposed to be their one-stop shop for questions about like navigating the bureaucracy in mm -hmm. New York of owning a business. And yeah, it was giving people incorrect answers that would actually be against the law for them <laughs> to do. And then their disclaimer says it occasionally produces incorrect, harmful, or biased information and that it's not legal to advice which is kind of like okay so why do i even have it then? yeah this yeah. is useless <laughs> i'm so i'm really curious to see like on self-driving cars there's a whole argument of like when does it become where the company takes liability mm -hmm. for if it gets in an accident so when does this become when do you get an ai model that you go okay we as a company are so confident in our ai model that we will take liability if it gives you wrong information 
and you do something illegal and right. end up in court. And, well, I don't think any company's ever going to say that, right? But I yeah. think the government is eventually going to say, hey, if you offer an AI model, you need to guarantee its accuracy within a certain percentage or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, because this is going to happen more and more. Especially, I think this is a great example with the, the New York, you know, legal bureaucracy stuff, because that is a, it, me and you run businesses. It's terrible. It it's is. terrible, guys. It's Never worst. own a business, man. Like It's like, <laughs> it's so much stuff that, is impossible for an average person to understand. Mm -hmm. And you need accountants and lawyers and all these advice people to like figure it out. Yeah. I would love an AI. I would love it if I didn't have to pay a bookkeeping and a tax service. You know, I would love it if I didn't have to pay a retainer to a lawyer. You got to give the money before they even do anything for you. You know, like it's terrible to like deal with lawyers and all this kind of stuff. So this is a place where AI can really make a lot of people's lives better mm -hmm. if it's accurate, if it works. And yeah, right now it just doesn't. And so, yeah. uh, but I mean, we're so early in this technology. I think we're eventually going to get there. And eventually the government is probably going to come in and say, hey, if you offer these services with an AI, you have to, your AI has to hit some kind of benchmark. Almost like we do safety tests with cars, right? Like, mm -hmm. oh, your car has to have so much of a crumple zone or you can't sell it. Yeah. So we can have this, some rule for AI that has to hit in some kind of benchmark test. It has to hit a certain score or you can't use it to the public. Mm-hmm. So that's all on the broad AI side of things. And it's really interesting to see all of these companies contributing in all of these ways. We always have the question of how many of these companies will Apple just acquire so that they can <laughs> integrate these features into their phones? How many of these features are they already working on internally that we'll hear about at WWDC? But ultimately, we're hearing about these high level things. And I think it's going to come down to a little more being on the consumer side. When we hear about things at WWDC from Apple that are AI, it's going to be things that the average person's like, oh, cool. Yeah. As opposed to like, it can do your books for you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I don't think anyone cares about the enterprise level AI, yeah. right? But it goes like, oh, like this thing is going to make you build your shopping list way quicker and order all your groceries. And mm -hmm. then people are like, that's what I need. Yeah. See what they say in June, WWDC.